The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 11th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, we've got you covered. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off early, if you would, and send that to steve at tfnn.com. Also, inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. If you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started for Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a slightly mixed bag out there. You've got um, all the U.S. indices traded downside with the exception of the transports. They're up 29 points. All the sectors inside the S&P 500 traded downside with regard to the with, with the exception being the uh, consumer st uh, staples area, uh, XLP. It's up six pennies. Oh, I take that back. The XLB building materials up 53 pennies as well. So you got the Dow down 107, S&P off 12, NASDAQ 148, Russell's down 13, semis 53. Gold is up Two bucks. Silver's up 11 pennies. Lights recruit is off 53 cents. Natural gas off three pennies. The 30 year treasury printed out at 121.13 out there. Leading to charge dollar wise, the upside. Uh, micro strategy, 164 buck move, 11 points. Coinbase is up 12 bucks, 5.0%. Duolingo, nearly 12 bucks or 5%. Charter Communications, 10 bucks, 3%. Moderna, 9% or 9 bucks. So the downside is Super Microcomputer, down 58 bucks. That's a 5% move. Eli Lilly off 30 bucks or 4%. Lamb Research down about 3% or 27 bucks. Asmil Holdings, 27 bucks. The downside in Facebook or Meta down 19 bucks. That's about a 4% move. Now, Friday's action may be kind of important. Why is that? Let's go take a look at all of the topping signals that were formed on Monday. And we're going to take a look at the indices out there. If we go take a look at the equity future contracts, we're not going to see much out there. So we don't exactly have um, um, a unanimous vote just yet on the uh, top. If we take a look at the Dow Jones, the cash indice, oh, I've got to change, oh, I did change the chart, charts out here. The uh, This formed a Rhodes-Mentum indicator top back on February 26th out there. So it's already got its topping pattern in play. If we take a look at the S&P 500, the S&P 500 formed a Rhodes-Mentum indicator top. Uh, prices blow its oscillator and change line. It's trading into a swing point from back on March the 5th. The NASDAQ 100 confirmed a Rhodes-Mentum indicator top as well. The Russell 2000 confirmed a TD9 count top. The semiconductor index generated bearish engulfing candle on Friday. That confirmed a Rhodesman Dominicator top there. The transports already had a Rhodesman Dominicator top. That formed on February 13th. The Nasdaq Composite, the big one, confirmed a Rhodesman Dominicator top as well. The New York Stock Exchange, it's in a world of its own, but right now price is trading below that green oscillator and change line, so it's telling us that it has lost its momentum, but we don't have any kind of a topping pattern there. But you could see we've got topping patterns in the other primary indices out there. So do we have a top? Time will tell. If we take a look at the equity future contracts, I'll put those up on our screen right now. Let's take a look at those. 
uh, equity future contracts. Let's look at the daily and the weekly time frames out here. So the top row is going to be daily. We have rolled over into June. So we're looking at the June contract out here. Again, no um, no topping pattern, just a consolidation with inside his profile with support in the strong area of 5130 to 5150. In the case of the NQ, no topping pattern as well. Price right now is testing the top of that daily profile. If it does close underneath that high, that high, the top of the profile being at 17... What is it? I can't find it. Uh, 18,224. If price were to close below 18,224, well, then we'd likely see a move back to 18,026. And it's an 18,026 area that's the real key. This is a bearish structured profile. And if price were to close below that, that would tell us that this is more than a counter trend move to the downside. Now, that could be just telling us that price is going to seek out support at the 17,761 level. Again, we've switched over to the June contracts. These are new profile levels than what we took a look at last week. Uh, so worth noting on your pad of paper, the Dow Equity Future contract. No pro, no uh, top out there, but price has been trading with inside that profile for the last five sessions. 38,779 is support. 39,314 is resistance. And the Russell 2000 did generate a rose momentum indicator top out there. I'm sorry, a TD9 count top, just like it did on the Russell 2000 cash indice, just like it did on the IWM. Right now, price is testing OUL support. It's actually below it. It being 2100 even Steven. We're 2091. A close, uh, if price closes back above or holds that green oscillator and change line, then it signals neutral. Whereas if price closes below it, tells us that we could be pulling back further. Now, the pullback further inside the Russell 2000 at the moment, because it does not have a new profile or anything, is down at the 2034 level. That's its level of support, and that would be the Russell 2000. If you look at the bottom row out there, that's the weekly time frame. You can see TD9 count tops for three of the four, the ES, the NQ, and the Adawa Equity Future contract. In the case of the Russell 2000, may have maybe trying to form an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern. But there's no TD9 count top. There's no top on the weekly time frame. There is most certainly on the daily time frame. So now it's really key to be watching that oscillator and change line. If, well, even though we've got a top out there, remember, when you have a top, all it really is telling us that price should pull back to test support. Well, we're looking at those support levels now on the daily and the weekly time frame together. In the case of the ES Mini, as an example, there is a new profile that is formed here. That new profile formed above the prior profile. That's a bullish signal from a profile standpoint. Support here is at 50.89. 51.22 or so is the level where price should pull back to to test. That's that green oscillator change line. If that level holds, um, then it, then it uh, well, we would have a neutral signal out here, neutral to bullish, what Stevie would say. And the NQ right now is testing that profile as well as the top, the, which is the top of its box for the weekly time frame. Then you know the problem is I've got the I don't have enough data on the Dow and the NQ, so I don't want to look at those profiles and give you those as the key areas to watch out there because they may not be accurate. But we can see that price is testing the oscillator and change line. And that is accurate out there. And that says that if today the NQ or the week, really it's a weekly uh, chart we're looking at, but if we do begin seeing close below 18,178, that would suggest that we see lower price out there. And we look to the daily time frame for those areas of potential support. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, same thing out here. Now this has formed a new profile. It's bearish in structure. So the key level to be watching there is really 38, uh, um, 831. But right now, it's still that green oscillator and change line. That's at the 39,008 level. It's called 39,000 even Steven. If price flows below that, odds favor a further move lower. So that's the equity future contracts. Daily and weekly, we took a look at the cash indices out there. So is it a top or not? I don't know. We're certainly pulling back to test support. If we break support, then it is a top. If we just test support, well, then, uh, you know, the uh, what we see here that's going on across the globe, but this is a uh, this is an international rally here in the U.S., that would continue. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-827-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Uh, okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, what I've got up on my screen right now are the top eight holdings inside the semiconductor index. The reason we're going to do that is uh, Tom G. writes in. He says, good morning, Steve. I've loaded up heavily last week on the uh, going short the semiconductors via SOXS. Uh, may want to buy a little bit more this week. Uh, it's had some huge volume on Friday. Just looking to see where you think it can go in the next couple of weeks. So to really answer that question, so these eight stocks out here, Tom, and you probably know this, but I want to share this with others out there. These top eight stocks right now represent 53% of the holdings with inside the semiconductor index. Those be that being NVIDIA, AMD, uh, uh, Broadcom, Qualcomm, Intel, uh, AMAT, Marvell, and uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. So to really answer that question, we really want to understand what's going on inside these eight stocks since they represent 53% of the weight. We'll go and take a look at the Semiconductor Index. Uh, we'll take a look at SOXS for you as well, try to give you some signals. But when we take a look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA on Friday generated a rose momentum indicator top. It also generated a sell the D point pattern, uh, and it did that with generating that bearish engulfing candle. Price right now, now what's also transpired today, Tom, everybody else out there, is that NVIDIA has formed a new daily profile so you have a new support level and that'd be 821.60 so i wouldn't be surprised to see price pull back to the 821.60 level out there whether it holds or not it's actually the way that this profile is formed it's above the prior profile it really says that the bullish trend would stay in place unless we see a close below 821.60 now the other level that you want to be watching is the daily oscillator and change line so far that's held as resistance on nvidia and that resistance level being 879 and change it saved in 909 somewhere right around there price close above that, Tom, that would be suggesting 
price moving up towards one of those new profile levels, either at the 897, so that wouldn't be much of a move, 897.80 or 935.90. We take a look at AMD. AMD formed a Roadsmith Dimidicator top on Friday, generated a bearish shooting star candle. This morning, price gaps down and it's below that oscillator and change on a 203.66. Watch that 203.66 level. What price should do here, as long as it remains below that green oscillator and change line, Tom, is pull back to test the 184.05 level, the top of that daily profile. Avgo. Avgo formed a uh, Rosemont Dimidicator top about a week ago. It did it with a Three River Evening Star candle formation. That remains in effect. What, what price is doing right now, Tom, it's back inside its profile. Its key level of support or first key level of support would be at 1223.31. So you're going to need to see close and blow 1223.31 on Avgo, 176.34 on AMD, 821.60 on NVIDIA. In the case of Qualcomm, it's got a TD9 count top, and it hasn't even made its way back to that green oscillator and change line. It's above profile levels. It's above that. It's really a neutral signal. 167.55 is an area for you to watch. If in the case of Qualcomm, price closed below that, that would be telling us it's lost its momentum and it should pull back further. How about Intel out here? Intel is trading above the top of its daily profile, maybe signaling a move back up to the 4541 level. How about AMAT? AMAT does not have a topping pattern, but is trading back inside its profile, and it has support at 194.24 to 196.33. Watch that area. Price closes below that, 167.50 would be up next. Marvell. Marvell has a uh, Rhodesman Dominicator top. In this case here, this is the bearish of, of so far of the uh, other six that we've looked at. This is the most bearish pattern. Why? Because as a Rhodesman Dominicator top, it has price trading below the bottom of a new profile that formed on Friday out there. That suggests that Marvell wants to try to get back to 59.95. Now, I'm not looking at the weekly chart, and one would need to do that for sure to understand where a level of support could be. If we take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor, Dr. Rhodes meant to indicate her top there, new profile that has formed, and that says that you've got support at 136.53, resistance 145.90. So based upon these charts, based upon the weighting of these charts, based upon the profile levels there, um, you know, it sounds like you, you, you took a, a fairly large position on um, on Friday out there, so kudos to you there. you got to watch these levels. Until they break, it'd be hard to say whether we're going to get a substantial change in trend or not. But let's go look at the other charts for the semiconductor index itself. I'm going to change panels here. If you give me a moment, I believe I'm on panel two. I hope I am. Let's see, screen. No, I don't know if I am or not. Uh, no, I think that's one. So you should be seeing now, yeah. So on the, on the left hand side, you got the quarterly chart for the semiconductor index. There is nothing. Well, I take that back. When I say there's nothing bearish. So hold on, Stevie. I see a wave number seven. Yeah, I see a wave number seven bottom that we're in. Now that requires a lower high on a quarterly basis in order to confirm that pattern out there. On a monthly basis for the semiconductor index, well, depends how the month ends. We're too uh, early into the month. Uh, if we did get a bearish reversal candle right now, it shows up as a shooting star. No idea whether that's what it will be. Come month then that would confirm a top the weekly time frame chart needs to close uh, this week above the close of bar number five of its td9 count then that's at 45 27 68 if price closes above that then uh, you've got a td9 count top that would then tell us tom you'd really be watching that green oscillator and change line on the day on the weekly time frame at the 46 67 uh, uh, the, yeah 46 67 level the daily time frame much like we took a look at for the top components in there confirmed a roads momentum indicator top price below it's a oscillator and change line out there um but is this just a two-day pullback right now all right we had closed lower uh yeah on friday where it looks like we'll close lower today we know that in a bull market uh you typically see near knee jerk reaction lows that last two to four uh, consecutive trading sessions out there so we won't know until we really move along here tom whether this is a top of significance or not out there. Um, you get a top on the monthly and the weekly and the daily time frame, then I would say it is a top of significance. But the monthly uh, chart here, uh, we've got more time left, so I don't really know uh, where to uh, go with that. So I hope that helped you out. Now, you did want to take a look at SOXS and wanted to see levels out there. So let me actually close these charts out because I take up a decent amount of resources. And we will flip over to take a look at SOXS. So if you give me a moment here, we'll pull up those charts just to see if there's some levels there for you to watch. But really, you're really watching uh, those top eight instruments and the actual index, index itself. Uh, if we get a moment out here, I think it is, is it this one. 
that went off. Uh, yeah. So if you take a look at the SOXS, on Friday, what it confirmed was a buy the D point pattern. It was a bullish engulfing candle out here. Now, Tom, what I don't have, so there's the profile levels here in SOXS are way up higher. So I don't have any support other than the low of Friday. If you see it close below a low of Friday, this is not the place to be. Uh, where is this headed to? I just have to look to the last swing point high. And that was back on February 28th. So perhaps price is going to go target 413. Uh, to uh, 406, 418 to 406 would be the area. Uh, TD nine count bottom potential on the uh, weekly time frame and the monthly, there's really nothing for us to look at there. So I hope that helps you out. Now, again, I had mentioned the two to four bar rule out here. Here's SOXS. We can see that the last uh, several, now this has been moving in a downtrend, right? It's been a bullish market. So this is the opposite. This is the bearish position out here. Um, but we can see the rallies have lasted uh, two bars uh, recently in the past uh, in the past um, um, in the past several weeks out here. So you see a number of two or three bar rallies out there. So you want to keep an eye on that as well. That's just like a normal dance step out there. So Tom, thanks for writing in and hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for your request. The next request well, was Jeff to ask about. Oh, I think we got a caller. Hold on a minute here. Give me a moment. We do. We got Bill in Jupiter. Bill, thanks for holding. Um, and do me a favor, continue holding. I just realized we're going to a hard break out there, so sorry to pick you up there. But when we come back to this break, we're going to go out to Bill and Jupiter, and we're going to take a look at the 30-year treasury. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to Jupiter, Florida, and uh, speak with Bill. Bill, thanks for holding. Thanks for calling. How are you this morning? Very good, Steve. Thank you. And by the way, fantastic analysis of the markets. I, I need to be watching every Monday morning. I can't miss that. That was terrific. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And thanks for listening in. Um, I know you want to take a look at the 30 year Treasury. We talked about this uh, last week, I believe, sometime. Uh, we know that the 30 year Treasury completed a TD9 count top uh, last uh, Thursday out there. Uh, how can I help you with this instrument? Steve, it, it appears to be stalling, but, you know, these things sometimes take time to, uh, you know, to get moving in the direction they appear to be going. I know the 30-year is overbought, but I'm wondering what your thoughts are. Is it still overbought, and does it appear? It re and one of the reasons I ask is I looked at the uh, open interest, and open interest is completely gone, so I'm assuming this thing should come down, but it's not reacting that way. It seems to go back and forth over that 121, 23 level. Just want sure. to get your thoughts on that. Okay, so when we take a look at the 30-year Treasury, I've got uh, multiple time frames that we're looking at here. And it's important to understand what's going on for each time frame. So, for example, on the 30-year Treasury for its monthly time frame, you need to see a close below 118 in order to tell you that for that time frame, it's gonna have some big downside traction. Other one, 118, even Steven, is a support level. On the weekly time frame chart, it's about 119 is a key support level. That's that oscillator and change line. So those are two numbers just simply to note. Now let's get to the daily time frame, which is what you were really speaking about. And on the daily time frame, we can see since that TD9 count, let me just simply expand this out just a bit so we're just looking at it. The TD9 count formed on Thursday of last week. What that suggests, folks, is that price should pull back to test support. Well, support here would be that daily green oscillator and change line. And right now, that's printing out at about 121, Bill, okay? So I'd have 121 on my pad of paper out there. Uh, we do see a sideways move. Uh, really over the last three days out there. Now there's a brand new profile that is forming as we speak right now. This profile is a different calculation. It's a different set of profiles on my white background chart and the black background chart. Unfortunately, that happens at time. I've learned to use that as a to an advantage for us as opposed to a confusing thing. Right now on the white background chart bill that you and I are looking at, this has formed a new profile below price. That's a bullish message. If we go switch over to the black screen, it's a profile that's formed within price out there. So what this white chart, I want to stick with this chart right now. What this is telling us that price should pull back to about the 120, um, whatever 75% of the 30 seconds is. Um, so in that range is where price should pull back. If price pulls back and finds support there, or maybe gets down a little bit uh, lower to that green oscillator and change line, that might be the extent of the move. We don't have anything to suggest that this is not going to move lower. And when I say anything, what I'm looking out at right now, Bill, it's very subtle, but since the TD9 count pattern formed on Thursday, we have a lower high on Friday, we have a lower high today on Monday. Now, we haven't taken out Friday's low out there, but at least we have a little series of, of lower highs. Um, if I any questions about the charts that we've looked at so far? No, terrific, Steve. Understood. Okay, uh, so uh, if we take a look at anything else, uh, uh, say intraday charts out here, I don't see any bottom patterns on a 30-minute chart or a 60-minute chart. However, the 60-minute chart does tell us some important information, and that is that if this is going to get downside traction on the daily time frame that you're looking at, you need to see a close below 121.11. On a 60-minute time frame, that is where price had broken out from. That breakout took place. Let me get my cursor out here. That breakout took place at 5 a.m., 
back on March the 7th. That set up a, a, a very objective level of support. It's breakout here. We can see that prices test that level one, two, three, three different occasions, and it's held. So that's, we've got a very strong support level there at 121.11. That's the area that you'll be looking at to see price close below to tell you that you're going to get some further downside traction out there. And that's what I see when I take a look at all those charts and time frames. Uh, any questions about that or anything else that I can provide for you? No, fantastic, Steve. Yes, just your thoughts on the uh, open interest and what it, what it means, if anything, or any significance to it. As I've been looking at the the ZB, the 30-year open interest is like dried up. It's completely gone. I guess that's probably why it's going sideways. There's no commitment one way or the other. Yeah, so, you know, you ask a great question, and if I could answer it or I could uh, could provide you with some additional insight, I would do that. My suggestion is I know that Basil follows open interest uh, like a hawk, and he integrates that into his trading system, and I believe that Larry uh, does the same. So my suggestion with regard to an answer for that question would either be to write them or call into their show because uh, they could provide you with better information than I can. Sorry about that, but I, I have to be honest, so I don't have to be, but I am. No, you're terrific, Steve. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Oh, thanks. You bet. Thanks for calling. That was Bill in uh, Jupiter. Uh, let's go out to uh, Martinez, California, and speak with Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? How was your weekend? I'm doing quite well, Steve. I had a great weekend. How about you? I, I did. Uh, not enough of it, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll look forward to the next one that's coming. Actually, the next one, <laughs> next weekend, do, next weekend, we go <laughs> celebrate my uh, mother-in-law's 96th birthday out there so that's going to be a that'll be a cool party i think that is that's fantastic yeah uh 96 all of her faculties really i mean it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's great it's extraordinary so i get to talk to her about the 1920s all the time and she's got early childhood memories i wish i had her memory i, I you know I, I can't remember back as far as she does but uh, i know that you called to take a look at uh, pfe out here uh what are you doing how can i help you well, just one thought on what you're talking about. I would, if you haven't done it already, I would recommend doing it. It's worth actually recording some conversations just because at, at some point you're just not going to remember things or at least write it down. Just just take notes on, you know, just historical facts that she, you know, was yes. a part of because it's something I regret not doing with some of my family members that have since passed and there's no way to go back and do anything once that's yeah, happened. Yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. You know, I've asked her to write a book. Yeah, you because know, she she questions her, her biggest question in life is why am I still here? Um, she does have a sister. She does have a sister that's still alive. She's two years older, but but she doesn't have all of her faculties and, and so forth. So it's a um, but I, you know, I have, I've asked her to write a book. Um, you know, why are you here? Well, write a book, Get, you know, to talk talk to us about about what you've learned throughout life. You know, it's a wonderful thing. So so that's what I'll be doing next weekend, folks. I, I won't be here in Delray. We'll be celebrating her birthday for the entire week. So looking forward to that. But Pfizer, again, I, I know you called to talk about I think you called to talk about Pfizer. Um, how can I help you? Well, I've seen Island Bottom, Steve, on the daily. Yes, and I see at, that too. At that low, it tested the low back at December 13th, which had much greater volume. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you think about you know, okay. potentially being a bottom, what else you might see. Okay, excellent. We're going to a break, Brent. Uh, please hold on. When we come back this break, we'll finish looking at uh, Pfizer and uh, be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We'll take a look at the stock charts here for Pfizer. We're doing that with Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, what these uh, stock charts show us on the daily time frame, as Brent identified, we've got a nice little island bottom pattern out here that uh, formed over the trading days of March the 1st through March the 6th. And that confirmed a road's momentum indicator bottom. What we have going on right now today, Brent, is price trading above resistance, and resistance being 2746, the top of its daily profile. The next area of resistance isn't much further than where we're at right now. And that would really be the high of February 20th. It was a bearish shooting star candle. It wasn't confirming anything, but uh, still a bearish candle can help us to identify support and resistance levels. So the next resistance area is going to be 28.14. If price can close about 28.14 on a daily time frame, then we're pretty much looking at the 29.86 area. When I look at the weekly time frame chart, last week confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. Did it with a bullish piercing candle. Price is traded with inside a bullish structured profile. Here I would say if price can close above the high from the week of February 23rd, and that would be a 2814, its message would be that price should go target 2915, and that is the top of the weekly profile. The monthly time frame chart does not have a bottom pattern. However, you could get a, a key reversal bar this month, and that would confirm a buy the D. Point. So nothing on the monthly to assist us right now out there. So the real question, and I did this because I had a little bit of time during that break out there, Brent, is on a weekly basis. So if somebody would ask me, what do I believe is the strongest of all the patterns uh, that I share with each, each and everyone each day? It would be that Rhodes momentum indicator uh, pattern, both for the highs and low, but mostly for the lows out there. Most patterns, folks, as, as most people know, the patterns typically work better at bottoms than they do at tops out there. Uh, but if you put a, if you put a complete 
complete the tool package together, you can still identify those tops as price goes through support levels. But here's what I did was I put up, I generated a weekly chart. I just went ahead and created a bar chart, makes it a little bit easier to go back and forth. And now, even though there's a signal, a diagonal signal, that doesn't confirm a bottom. The way that this pattern gets confirmed is with a bullish reversal candle out there. So what we can see here is you've got that bullish piercing candle that formed last week. If we pull this stock chart back further and go take a look for other weekly, we want to understand what's the importance of a weekly Rhodes momentum indicator bottom out here. If we take a look at the next one, this takes us back to 2009 on a weekly basis. How about that? And that gave us that uh, bullish reversal candle the week of April the 17th. Oh, I take here's another one. So then price ends up pulling back into the July 9th, July, uh, week of July 9th, just before that, and that creates another Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So those two uh, indicated to us that those are pretty solid. Let's go back further. Here's another one that forms back in December of uh, 2005. That was a pretty significant bottom out there. Let's uh, pull this back further, see if we've got anything more. No, that's it. So that's all the data that I have. So what I would say, Brent, is that uh, what we got on the weekly time frame last Friday uh, could end up being that we could end up seeing a fairly significant uh, rally out there. What say you? I say that's great news. I appreciate ah, okay. it. Steve. Ah, okay. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Price still, even though we've got all that, it still boils down to now the ABCs of things, and that is that price still has to prove itself to us by taking out these resistance points. But at least we know where they're at. We know where those battles will be, and you know that you. Uh, I, I assume that you're you're long here, and you know you've got some pretty good support at your back. You know you've got enough patterns to really justify why you're in this position. You may be in it for a while. I would say that if price can clear the 29.15 level, then you're at that 29.86 and above 29.86. The next area would be in the 30s right now I'd say about 32 or so but anywhere between 32 and 36 so that's the overall view of Pfizer Brent is there is there anything else that I can do for you no Steve it's I think at this point we've talked enough it's almost like you know what I'm gonna really want to see before you know I even yeah you know, express it to you it just kind of happens so Perfect. Uh, I appreciate that it's like <laughs> you're always on top of what I'm looking for and and uh by the end of our conversation, I have exactly what I was hoping for. Good. Excellent. Hey, Brent, always good to speak to you. Thanks so much for the call and the idea to uh, start uh, so for me to start taking notes when I'm speaking with my uh, mother-in-law out there. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and we're going to do that on, on Saturday and Sunday for sure. Absolutely. So good to speak yeah, to you. I'm I looking forward to joining. No, no, it's great to speak with you, Steve. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just going to say that, yeah, it's really for me is more family history. Yes. Things that I just... Only way to know is, I mean, they just have been around it long enough, kind of know what happened in the past, and it's just once that has gone away, it's really hard to retrace it. So it's, oh, it's much yeah, better absolutely. to do it while it's you can still do it. <laughs> absolutely, you know, absolutely. So what's great is that usually uh, we pick her up, and I go pick her up and bring her over here, and it's a couple hour drive, so I get you know at least four hours. Um, you know, and she's not sleeping. <laughs> you know, I'm the one that's driving wants to go to sleep. She's wide awake. So it's a it's a cool thing. So anyways, enough of that. Uh, let me get on to some other requests out there. And always good to speak to you. We'll look forward to our next conversation. All right. Thank that you is, so much. You have yourself a great uh, week. And, and uh, of course, today as well. You bet. Brent DeMartinez, California. Let's go to uh, some requests, some additional requests that have come in. Let's see what I can get through out here. Hopefully everything. Um, so we had a request to take a look at, I don't know, that was from Friday. We had a request to take a look at Apple from Jambalaya. So let's start, pull up the charts for Apple, see if he's just got to get to them out there. And his question specifically, is Apple based in a getting ready or is it getting ready to get roasted and toasted out there? Well, here's what I can share with you, uh, Jambalaya. On Friday, what Apple did, Apple confirmed a, um, confirmed a buy the D point pattern. Uh, oh, we've got another caller. Okay, well, let me let me just get through this. Apple confirmed a buy the D point pattern when it generated this uh, Three River Evening Star candle formation. It also had generated a TD sequential, Tom DeMarc sequential signal back on March the 5th. And that requires just simply a close above the close four bars earlier. Well, we're going to get that today, it looks like, inside of Apple. Now, the key area here, Jambalaya, that Apple needs to get above is a Sasser and Chain Sign. So we can see the price has rallied into um, a resistance level, a key resistance level, at 173.86. If Apple can close above 173.86, you've got 
further rally. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, Apple pulled back to its breakout area at 170.42 and it found support. It also has its bullish structured weekly profile that has a buy zone between 172.09 and 174.33. So the answer to your question with regard to is Apple going to get roasted? The answer to that would be yes if we see a close below last week's low. And last week's low inside of Apple is 168.49. So that's the area to be watching. I hope that helps you out. This looks like day number two of a rally. It's not unusual. Remember, if, there, if in, Apple has been in a bear market out there, we certainly shouldn't see a, um, a rally, that la uh, rally that lasts more than four days. If we do see a rally that lasts more than four consecutive days, that's telling us that these bottoms are pretty solid out there. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go out to John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm very well. Uh, enjoy that trip next week. And Steve, I, I wanted to ask, you would just post up uh, your panels of uh, charts on two items, please, uh, by the end of the show. Yep. One is uh, an ETF, ticker symbol ASHR, Albert Sammy Henry Roberts. Yes. Uh, and that, Steve, just for your knowledge, I've never spoken to you about this in the past. This is an ETF that, in my research over the past 10 years, most closely tracks the Shanghai uh, Stock Exchange Composite Index. Got it. Okay. Uh, I'm long this from about a month ago, and I'm wondering if you can put up both the daily and weekly charts and tell me uh, what your indicators say about this advance, whether it's uh, giving clues of short-term tops or if it's in true Excellent. rally ramp mode. And the second and symbol before we go to the break? The second symbol? Very good. No. Well, okay. See Roger and Tampa, and we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. 
Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I'm, I got the Shanghai index up on my screen first. Now we'll go take a look at the uh, symbols or the uh, ASHR charts out there. And what I wanted you to know, John, is because we're going to get two different pieces of information, which is why I went ahead and put this up on our screen. So the actual Shanghai index uh, formed bar number eight of a TD9 count uh, today. So that says that by Wednesday, this should complete a TD9 count pattern. Now, what that would then suggest that price would at least pull back to its oscillator and change line. We had a TD9 count pattern that formed out here back on February 27th. And in essence, that's what really took place back on February 29th out there. Uh, if price were to break through that, then that would would tell us that you've got even a further retracement to deal with. So you're likely in the Shanghai index to get a TD9 count top between today and Wednesday. When we take a look at ASHR, we don't have that message. The message we have here from ASHR, ASHR with price being above profiles that it wants to go target is TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That's at 2521 out there. That's its next area of resistance. If we look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame has a beautiful roads momentum indicator bottom. The daily I'm sorry, had a TD9 count bottom. The daily had the roads momentum indicator bottom the monthly has a TD9 count bottom and you can see on a monthly basis here John price running right up into resistance that's that oscillator and change line so that's basically where we're trading right now there is another resistance level just above at 2509 if price can close above 2509 then this thing should continue to motor on higher I would say 2720 would then be the next target out there so that's what I see when I take a look at ASHR and the Shanghai and I hope that that's what you were looking for out there I think you also wanted but I could be wrong. The charts for Alcoa. A is a ticker symbol. And on Friday, this generated a roads momentum indicator top. Right now, we've got a new daily profile out here. And the support on that profile is going to be at 143.13. That's also just about its oscillator and change line out there. That's where we would expect price to pull back. I don't have any kind of a top on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. So it looks like really just a short term topping signal for it. So we didn't get to all of the requests out there. My apology for that, but I will make sure that we get to those requests, which were for uh, Coca-Cola, Roblox, Carvana, um, and some of those came from inside the Tiger's So I'll be able to post those charts in there uh, in just a few minutes uh, for you folks. So folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Uh, have a marvelous Monday, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care now.